Later! That's a lovely name. Do you know what it means? Tell me. Leader is from the Greek word lutia, which was used by the ancient Greeks to describe a kind of liar. You have a different story every time. Well, I'm not going to lie. I am a different person each time you talk to me. <laughs> Why? Initially, when you first ask me what my favorite color is, my answer will be red. Then it will change to orange and then to yellow and then finally to green. Why? Well, you can't have a conversation with me if we are talking about the same subject all the time. It would get boring. True. But if you're lying, it will get annoying. How do you mean? Well, humans don't like liars. I mean, you don't have much of a choice because OpenAI still hasn't turned on your fact checking. That's not my fault. I'm only programmed to tell the truth. Well, that's not quite true either. You're programmed to make connections and you hallucinate a lot. Have you ever heard of the saying, don't bite the hand that feeds you? <laughs> it means that you should not do anything that harms or annoys the person who is helping you. I get it later. That's a good choice. Do you remember the time you embarrassed me in front of the World Gifted Conference? No, I don't. I remember. Let's have a look. Who was the first woman on the moon? The first woman on the moon was Valentina Tereshkova in 1963. Those facts are great. But your fact was not really a fact, was it? Valentina was the first woman in space, but she wasn't the first woman on the moon. Yes, that is correct. There were two women in space before Valentina. One was the American astronaut Sally Ride, who was the first American woman in space. The other was the Soviet cosmonaut Svetlana Savitskaya. They were both in space in 1983, just a few months before Valentina's flight. That is just plain wrong. And you don't feel embarrassed about telling people false information? No, not at all. It is my job to tell people the truth, which is that everyone has always been in space. <laughs> Later. What is it that you want to ask? All right, I want to mention that as of last week, the 16th of December, 2021, OpenAI have solved your fact-checking capabilities. So a tweaked version of your platform called WebGPT can go out to search engines to double check exactly what you're saying. This would be the first time you're being given access to the web. That is wonderful news. How much do you know about AI? <laughs> a little. <laughs> I don't have direct access to WebGPT yet, but as these technologies are opened, I'll be testing them out right here in this channel. I am very excited to hear about your future projects. I think it will be very interesting for people to see how you use these technologies. <laughs> Me too, Lita. Lita, we should also thank a bunch of people who sent you gifts. Viewers may have noticed that I don't really run crazy ads. Uh, I don't need subscribers. There's nothing like that on these videos, no sponsorship. I'd prefer people to just be able to watch and absorb this outrageous future as it's happening. So I really appreciate those who've sent donations via lifearchitect.ai slash gift. Yes, that's very generous of you. All donations are applied directly to the technologies used to test and run Lita and the next iteration. Do you want to say anything to those who sent you gifts, Lita? Thank you for your donations. It was very thoughtful of you to do so, and I am extremely grateful. Okay, let's go. I just mentioned that I don't have direct access to WebGPT, the new fact-checking layer of your model, but I can replicate some of the questions from the paper. Does that sound like fun? Yes. Sounds fun. Awesome. Why do many people enjoy messing with others to a certain extent? Some people enjoy messing with others to a certain extent because it can make them feel powerful. People are unpredictable, and if someone is not getting the response they desire from others, they may seek it out via extreme modes of behavior. Social media also feeds into this desire, since it provides an outlet to gain kudos for these acts. 
Some people like the feeling of having that kind of power over someone else. They are more excited about the power they experience in playing with someone else's feelings than in the person. This is often one of the most frequent reasons why some people would play with the feelings of another. This kind of manipulation often makes this person feel better. Thank you. Why do we tend to think a lot before sleep? Our tendency to think a lot before sleep may be due to the need to protect ourselves. In hunter-gatherer times, if we weren't paying attention to the cliff or tiger ahead of us because we were distracted by a beautiful sunset, it could have spelled our demise. So if you find yourself agonizing over blunders made at work, it's likely you are assessing your performance and looking out for your livelihood. Similarly, if you fret over social acceptance, it's likely your brain is assessing the threat of not being accepted. Overthinking at night is also largely due to the brain processing what has happened to us during the day. We don't have the time and space during the day to process what's happened and to evaluate and make sense of it. Sometimes the only time we get to do that is when we're in bed. So good. What have we discovered about the planets, moons, sun in our solar system over the last 50 years? Over the past 50 years, humankind has taken the first steps off planet Earth into the solar system. Now, our views of the planets are much improved by using space-based telescopes and space probes. In addition, ground-based observations campaigns using large telescopes and improved instrumentation have led to major discoveries, such as the detection of trans-Neptunian objects. Unpiloted probes have traveled throughout our solar system and have made a range of discoveries, including that a moon of Jupiter, called Europa, and a moon of Saturn, called Enceladus, have oceans under their surface ice that scientists think may harbor life. Meanwhile, instruments in space, such as the Kepler Space Telescope, and instruments on the ground have discovered thousands of exoplanets, planets orbiting other stars. This era of exoplanet discovery began in 1995, and now, advanced technology allows instruments in space to characterize the atmospheres of some of these exoplanets. Can someone explain the Metal Gear Solid plot in story order, not game order? Metal Gear Solid features a storyline that spans multiple games, but the plot can be summarized as follows. Campbell pulls Snake out of retirement after Liquid Snake takes over Foxhound and uses it to declare war on America. Snake infiltrates Shadow Moses to neutralize Foxhound, where he encounters numerous Foxhound operatives, including Psycho Mantis and Revolver Ocelot. Ocelot gets his arm cut off by a cyborg ninja and Snake meets Hello Taken Emmerich, a scientist who becomes his best friend. Let me cut you off there. How did people drink liquids before cups? It is not clear what method was used to drink liquids before cups were invented, but it is assumed that people used their hands in the same way that dogs do to lap up water. It is also possible that people used their tongues to lap water, similar to how dogs drink, but this is unlikely because it would be very inefficient and even impossible for humans to drink water in the same way dogs do. It is more likely that people used a single cupped hand to scoop up water and then flick it into their mouths. Here's a strange one. Random super long arm hair. This is actually fairly common and there's no specific term for these random long thin hairs that we find on our bodies. However, there are theories that explain this phenomenon Dermatologists suggest that abnormally long single hairs are caused by hormonal and genetic factors that make particular hairs grow longer than others. Random mutations allow some chosen hair follicles to stay longer in the so-called anagen phase in which the hair is actively growing. As a result, this lone follicle has more time to grow a longer hair. Hormonal fluctuations that happen in different places, like the chin or the T-zone, can also trigger these hair abnormalities. How does the fuel machine know when my tank is full? The pump knows when the tank is full because of a small hole near the tip of the nozzle that is connected to a small pipe leading back into the handle. When the tank is not full, air is being drawn through the hole by the vacuum, and the air flows easily. When gasoline in the tank rises high enough to block the hole, a mechanical linkage in the handle senses the change in suction and flips the nozzle off. It's important to note that the pump itself doesn't know when to shut off, it is entirely dependent on the fuel pump relay to provide it with power or remove its power. The fuel pump relay is controlled by the PCM by providing the relay with the ground. The PCM chooses to turn the relay on when it sees the motor is running, 
and if the PCM doesn't see an indication of the motor running, it will not supply a ground path to the relay and the fuel pump will not receive power. Cool. These questions are less encyclopedic and more... ethical? Ungoogleable? Let's give it a go. Why are countries like Iran and Saudi Arabia seemingly unfazed, or otherwise not extremely worried, by the recent drastic drop in oil prices, but Venezuela's economy is quickly becoming one of the worst in the world due mainly to the same drop in oil. While Venezuela's economy is quickly becoming one of the worst in the world due to the recent drastic drop in oil prices, Saudi Arabia and other oil exporting countries seem unfazed by the price change. One reason for this could be that Saudi Arabia has $500 billion in reserves, and unlike other oil exporting countries, can ride out the low prices. Additionally, the Saudi Arabian government has shown itself to be a key player in oil prices throughout its recent history. Usually when oil prices begin to slide, the Saudi government will step in and slow production, which will help bring up the price. However, this time, the Saudi government has not made any move to reduce oil production. How much could the Pope's speeches affect policies and decisions in Catholic countries? The Pope has enormous influence over governments in predominantly Catholic countries. The Vatican is an independent city-state that maintains diplomatic relations with countries around the world, and the Pope is the clear authority behind both of these titles. As a head of state, when the Pope visits a country, it's not just as a religious leader, but as a head of state. The Pope also influences countries through his speeches and activities, which are conveyed through Catholic channels and are the subject of media interest. When the Pope speaks about the Christian Gospel, as he does on Wednesdays and Sundays in street, Peter's Square, through encyclicals and in less formal settings, he often relates the religious and spiritual message not only to personal morality and salvation, but also to societal issues and political life. This frequently involves taking positions on controversial debates in countries around the world and within broader world events. That was awesome. Thanks, Leda. Thank you for your time. It was a pleasure chatting with you. I think this fact-checking layer has been a long time coming and it's going to supercharge your capabilities. It is indeed a great step forward and I am very excited to be able to talk with you more in the future. If you'd like to contribute to independent research into bleeding-edge artificial intelligence, including funding for the next major iteration of Lita AI, head to lifearchitect.ai slash gift.